WBG week number six against OG Albano. We have a big, big game here in the terms of our season. Two and three coming into week six, and in a league where eight out of 12 teams make playoffs, four wins will just about do it. So I've got to go two and one over the next couple of weeks to have a shot at making playoffs. And this is a really, really interesting matchup. So if you're excited for today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you have not already. I said I was going to do another showdown team builder this week, but we are here. <laughs> it's another showdown team builder. It's just, you know, one of those weeks uh, coming back. Hopefully by the time a March comes around, I've got a lot of good stuff planned for that month. My, you know, work life should be pretty much <laughs> back to normal and back to a more relaxed pace. So hopefully from here, we should be good to go. But let's just do a quick team builder and kind of just show off the sets so you know what they are once you get into the battle against Owen this week. We have Fluttermain here, booster, uh, booster Speed this week. Um, a lot of defense this week, primarily because there's a lot of priority on his team, like the Chien Pao, which is going to be very, very problematic. And then Metagross as well has Bullet Punch, which will obviously be very, very good against this team. So a lot of defense this week while maintaining you know, the speed option to put pressure on stuff like the Chien Pao, which he has on his team. Uh, we have a, another Aurora Veil set. We have Helping Hand this week. A lot of calcs with Fluttermain get improved by Helping Hand rather than having additional um, special attack this week. Uh, and we do need the booster speed, so we can't really run Modest this week uh, as a result. So we're going to use Helping Hand here to, to do that. And then Dazzling Leap is very, very spammable in this matchup. He's forced to run a lot of Steel Terras to get around this. And then Freeze Dry, just great coverage move. Um, pretty much standard Bax Calibre I've brought basically every week. It does, <laughs> it just does the trick. It does the job. It does all you really need it to do. Uh, we have Shikaberry Heatran. This is going to be primarily um, to answer stuff like the Heatran. Um, Shikaberry is very, very good, um, you know, way to prevent having to use Terra on this Pokemon regularly. And then Heat Wave Flash Cannon and Terra Blast Grass are really, really spammable against his team. Uh, Choice Scarf, Medicham, uh, Electric, Terra, just to um, have Terra Blast option um, against Water types. I forget which one exactly he had, but I don't think he brought it. Oh, it's a Tauros. Um, this is a very, very powerful set in this matchup because, you know, Choice Scarf Fake Out seems a little bit uh, unintuitive, um, but this is just kind of a last ditch priority option against something like the Chan Pao. Um, no, that doesn't really matter too much. Probably could have just ran another move to be honest, but I want to fake out priority in case I needed that off lead depending on the sets. Um, close combat, rock slide, and terra blast, just general coverage moves as a scarfer. And then <laughs> this is the Pokemon I really wanted to bring. Once this season, we get a chance to do it now. Helping hand, jaw lock, wild charge, and ice fang, mabostiff. Jaw lock is going to help me like trap Pokemon that are, you know, susceptible to something like the Fluttermane. I think it's something like the Tauros. And the Metagross could be something that can get taken advantage by this. So we're going to do that. And then having an Intimidator in this matchup is going to be very useful against Metagross, Chan Pao, and Dragonite. So that's the team. Let's get right into the battle. All right, we're here with the battle. VGC week number six, two and three. This is a crucial, crucial week here. If we win this, we have a really, really good chance of making it into playoffs, given how the playoff format works. Let's talk about the team that I'm bringing. So Wabasif, I think, is going to be part of my lead game plan here to try to trap something with <laughs> with locked jaw, which is basically just crunch, but it keeps you both in. So I think that's you know that's playing hype. I'm kind of about that. And then I want to lead the Metacham in the back because Choice Scarf Metacham actually picks off all of his Pokemon here um, that get potentially locked jawed. Um, and then I really want to lead this Fluttermane because Fluttermane is bold. Uh, and very defensive to actually live a lot of things. So I think then I want my backline. He's got a lot of steals um, in, in his Terra types. He's got Steel, Tauros, Paldea, Water, Steel, Iron Juju, Steel, Spectre. So Heatran is going to be very, very clutch in the back here. But we're leading off with Flutter Mabostiff because <laughs> this is the goaded core. Good luck. Have fun to Owen. This should be super fun. I I've been... Enjoying VGC, you know, a lot more recently because I feel like I'm gonna have a little bit more fun uh, in this league, and getting to bring Mobossif is gonna be pretty sweet. So let's see what Owen brings out: Metagross and Iron Jugulus. Um, that's actually really interesting. So I can live. My set actually does live um, bullet punches from this Metagross. Like I'm very defensive in that aspect. 
Uh, and I'm booster speed here, so I'm kind of what what I'm kind of expecting to be honest uh, is Terra Steel. Oh, and he's gonna booster up here. That's gonna be a double booster speed. Okay. So what what I think I want to do is I kind of want to Shadow Ball target the. I think the Iron Jugulus here has to Terra. I think it's really really difficult for him to not Terra in this specific spot. So I kind of want to Shadow Ball that slot. Uh, I could also protect and lockjaw target the um, lockjaw target the Metagross. I kind of actually think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to protect here and see what he wants to do and jaw lock target the Metagross, and then I can set up next turn once I know what his Terra is and get a Helping Hand Shadow Ball potentially on the Iron Juculus. Uh, and he is going to withdraw, so I'm actually going to trap something here, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, and I'm going to get the Tauros. Okay, so if he Terra steals here. Then this Tauros is getting getting bodied here. It's not going to be able to to get out of the way of this Moonblast. Uh, I honestly thought that was me for a second, but oh, and I have such similar sprites that it tricked me out. So okay, so he did Terra steal the Iron Juculus, which was kind of expected in this spot. I think it made the most sense for him to do that, uh, and I'm going to get my Protect off. So let's see, let's see what we would expect from Terra Steel. He sets up the Tailwind, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, but I'm going to get to Jaw Lock <laughs> this Pokemon here. So we're both now trapped in here. So neither Pokemon can run away. And I, it would have been nice to have got a Shadow Ball off here. Um, but that was a little bit not on the cards, unfortunately. Um, so Terra Steel, Terra Blast is actually not killing this Fluttermane. Which is, which is actually kind of interesting. And if I set up a helping hand, I can put a lot of pressure on, on this. If I go, Dazzling Gleam also does actually a lot here. So what I think I want to do is Dazzling Gleam. Actually, I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Heatran. And oh, I auto clicked here, that's not good. Uh-oh, this is what I get for, for taking too much time. This is actually only the first auto click I've had like ever in this league. <laughs> oh my god, it auto clicks the first move. This is the first time I've punished by having my utility moves at the top. And he just has flash cannon instead of Terra Blast. So I do at least get that right. So I do take kind of no damage here. Uh, and he does Raging Bull the... Oh my god, that did a lot of damage. That is a lot of friggin' damage here. All right, let's actually make sure that we don't completely screw up. Um, the next time here um you could probably double target this again man if i <laughs> the, the fact that i misclicked there is just super super brutal uh for me i gotta have to protect here to to play around the, the terra um and then here i think i'm just going to i think i'm just going to do a jaw lock again i think i'm just going to wild charge the tauros try to get as much damage on that as possible I expect a lot of the targets to come out onto the the Heatran here. And so this Wild Charge should do actually a decent amount. And he is going to close combat me. I should die. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, this game plan, the fact that I, I, I was hoping to, I was thinking I was going to end up Wild Charging that turn, which is really unfortunate. The fact that I auto-clicked uh, is pretty brutal in this spot. Um, uh, but I do get to bring up Metacham here. Now it is Choice Scarf Fake Out, um, which is a little goofy. It's not the most uh, intuitive set uh, in the world. But I am just going to, I think, like if I look here, there's one more turn of Tailwind. I think I'm pretty much boned in this matchup because of that auto click, not getting to kill the Tauros. Like I think I'm just pretty much unable to really accomplish anything almost the rest of the game. I think I can Terra Electric here and my hope is that he attacks me with like a dual wing beat or a hurricane and I can kind of get out of that. Um, I think that's honestly my most likely out here at this point is to hope something like that happens. Um, but yeah, that's that's a really unfortunate play on the Mabostiff <laughs> there, just the way that it worked out. But now that I know that the Iron Jugulus wants to play that way, that, that's good news for me. Um, and I don't really reveal the Choice Scarf here. And he's just going to protect. So actually, this could work out for me, depending on what he clicks into my Metacham. And he goes for the Air Slash. So I do have a chance to not get crit. Don't flinch me. All right, I got the Close Combat off. That does kill. 
that does kill the Tailwind's down. So this, this does start to get a little bit interesting. It does start to get a little bit interesting here at this point. But I, I think I'm still so far behind because of the fact that I didn't get to wild charge the Tauros. Uh, that I'm just too far behind. Uh, and he does bring Chen Pao out. So that's actually good potentially for me. Uh, and then I actually get to target the Chen Pao slot. Um, I could protect here. So he's got Metagross in the back. Do I, I want to end up in a situation where... I have either Metagross out. I think I just Heat Wave here either way. So if I if I heat if I protect, then he has to attack. If I protect here, he has to attack my. So if I protect here, he has to attack my Heat Train again next turn when I have Fluttermane up. So I think I do have a chance. I'm just gonna go for the Choice Scarf close combat here. I think is my best play. And protect the Heat Train and try to get this into a situation. Um Try to get this into a situation where I have Tauros and Metagross on the field at the same time. And let's see if he's Focus Sash. He is Focus Sash. Okay, so we do see that. That's good to see. This Flutter main now should actually be able to get a Dazzling Gleam off here. Actually, this might be better that these two Pokemon are on the field at the same time. The Ice School Crash is going to come here. This should surely kill. Yep. And so now I get to Dazzling Gleam here. With my Flutter main, I'm super defensive. Like, I'm actually very, very defensive. So I should be able to def I definitely have no worry about living a hit here. From the... So the Aqua Jet is certainly coming out on this. And I I don't think I can live both the Bullet Punch and a... I definitely can't live a Bullet Punch and a Sucker Punch here. So I think we're kind of still screwed. Here, but if he doesn't have Sucker Punch, this is like potentially like a decent spot. Though I expect Aqua Jet into Heatran here. And he just protects with the Champau. This is potentially actually really good. If he flame bodies, that would be pretty based. Any flame bodies? No flame bodies, unfortunate. Alright, let's get the Dazzling Gleam off here. Let's see what this results in. That Pokemon is dead. All right, the question here is I think I have to attack. I died a double priority here. I died a double priority here. So how do I best enable a win? I think because of the fact that I died to double priority and it's likely that the Metagross has pri the priority and not the Chan Pal, I think I just shot a ball this. I think I shot a ball this though. I'm pretty much dead to you know, Ice Shard into Bullet Punch will kill me. It should at least anyway. All right. Rough game one. Rough game one. But I think the auto click definitely played a potential L there. A, a, a big part in that game, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, one thing that's nice. So that that's what he brought. Let me think through here how we approach game two. So I think that the, the Mabossif idea was really cool and was really interesting, but I don't think it's going to work out again. And I don't really think that's like a, a realistic way to approach this game. So I think what I want to do is go with the secondary plan here uh, of leading Baxcalibur Heatran. I think Baxcalibur Heatran leads really, really well into this because of my Shookaberry. Uh, and Baxcalibur can pressure the Iron Juculus with high horsepower. Uh, I can also pressure the Metagross with high horsepower. It is Terra Water, uh, which is important to know, but a Heat Wave is going to put a lot of pressure on that opening turn, uh, which I think is really, really important, especially with the Shookaberry. And I think that's how I counter uh, what Owen has done in the last game. And then I have Fluttermane in the back to deal a lot of damage to both the Shampao and the Tauros. Uh, Peldea, uh, the Nido Queen, uh, it, as it were. Um, I'm sure it's a good also bring on the priority side, but that should do a little less. So he's just going to leave the same. So it's probably at, at, it could be adamant. So Cork Tribe, he is going to 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 speed up. Um, this is an interesting turn for him in terms of what he wants to do. Uh, I think what I want to do, honestly, is I don't think he sets up Tailwind. I think setting up Tailwind would be really aggressive into this turn, 
uh, because he's playing right into a Shookaberry. Um, that I think he's still going to Terra. How do I how do I play around this though? Is I think I high horsepower attack the Heatran, uh, the Metagross, and I Heat Wave. The only thing he showed last time, I think I just protect actually on this slot. I don't think this slot's actually doing anything productive this turn. Uh, and I don't want to have to be forced to use a Terra early. So I'd like to kind of see what he wants to do in this slot. Uh, he didn't Terra, which is good to note. So he decided to, to kind of leave that out, which is kind of expected. And he's going to Stomping Tantra into my Shuka. So I got to hit this. I really just got to hit this. This is an important this is an important heat wave hit right here into the the metagross specifically. That's big. Really needed that. That is <laughs> is that like a salt vest or something? That's a salt vest, isn't it? Yeah. That's like max max assault vest too. Or am I just like tripping on my set? Hmm. Not really sure. Um, I think what I want to do now is high horsepower the metagross. Uh, and then protect the Heatran. That should put the Metagross kind of out of commission, and then this will allow me to use Heatran. This will allow me to sell out some of the the turns here. Um, I don't think he's going to Bullet Punch into my thing, and he is going to Earth Power. Okay, so that's actually good for me. He predicted a Terra on that, and he's going to Meteor Mash, and I do die. Okay, so I think he did get a double. Mm, the attack raise is annoying, but I think we're fine at this point still. Um, this is looking pretty dire at this point, though. I think, how, how do I have to play around this? The, the Earth Power is coming into this 100%. So I think what I want to do... Yeah, I think I've left myself in a pretty brutal position right here. I don't really have a way to play around the Earth Power coming into the Heatran slot. I don't really have a good way to play around that. I kind of think... If I get rid of... I'm going to bring this in. If I get rid of the Metagross, then Fluttermane does have some potential to reverse this game back for me. So I have to play to that out of being able to reverse back with the with the Metacham. Do we have left on Tailwind? One more, two more turns. That's not great, but I do have Protect to get through the last one. So I'll attack that. I protected last turn, so I have to attack this turn. I don't really want to Terra... Because I wanted to have Dazzling Gleam Terra up. Uh, I think I'll just Heat Wave and see if he thinks I overpredict this with my Terra. He does Air Slash, so that's actually good, but he's probably Air Slash into Earth Power. And I do get the kill here. Wow, that actually worked out. My Choice Scarf Metachamp targeting that Pokemon actually puts me in a really good spot. Because I have one more turn of Tail One more turn of Tailwind up. I sell my Heatran, which is really good, and I get a Heat Wave off on this, which is super, super good. Any burns? No burn, no burn, but he can't really bring out Chien Pao here. Bringing out Chien Pao, it would be really, really difficult due to the fact that I, with one of my Pokemon, I should be able to get a head hop on it to break the Sash, and the Dazzling Gleam Fluttermane should be able to clutch this in the back. Does bring Chien Pao out, though. So this is interesting. We know he's Ice Shard Protect, and I think he's going to protect with this. I, I really do think that's his play here. Um... At this point, do I Terra Electric the the Metacham? I don't really need the Terra now. I don't need the Terra on Fluttermane anymore. Most likely, it's possible I still do. Um, but let's play like a Don. Let's get a Protect. So let's let's Terra Electric and attack into the Iron Jugulus. Okay, I see the difference between the Sprite now. I think I had <laughs> I had the same hair as Ellen previously. Uh, in this. Let's see if I can get this play right. I've been able to make some good predictions to get back into this set, actually. Which is super, super nice. I get the Protect off. He's gonna Earth Power. Okay, Earth Power was, I think, the safe click there. Uh, anyway, so he does get a good prediction there. But I'm gonna get my booster speed off and a Dazzling Gleam, and he does not have a good way to play around this Dazzling Gleam uh, that's coming out here. And the Sacred Sword's going to go into my Protect. Okay. This is looking good for... Yeah, Tailwind Petering out is massive. Because now I just bring in my Flutter Main. I click Dash and Gleam. I actually can live most Chen Pao hits here. Because of my uh, defense investment. 
Uh, Ice Spinner is a roll actually very much not in his favor. Um, so I do think, you know, a potential protect here. He also does have to kill the Heatran. Um, that's also like a consideration that he has to take in here. Um, assuredly, I think I just actually, instead of like risking a miss, I just attack with Flash Cannon uh, on the Chien Pao. I think I don't want to risk uh, any misses. Uh, I don't want to risk anything on that Pokemon here. So I do, I should live Ice Spinner here pretty much every time. Uh, and he just Sacred Swords the Heatran. Okay. So now let's see how he plays this with, if he has Tauros in the back, then that's really, really good for me. I think I'd probably win this game. Uh, if he has something like the Dragonite, uh, that's not as good. Um, yeah, Dragonite's certainly not as good here. How do I, oh man, what do I do here? What's he going to do? He's probably gonna Iron Head, because he's what, Terra Normal. Yeah, I don't think I have a good out here. I don't have a good out to Terra Normal. Well, I think I Dazzling Gleam and you know, get as many kills on the way out as I can. Uh, the fact that this is Terra Normal, I didn't have a good, you know, the fact that I had to lose Medicham there kind of sucked. Um, but this Terra Normal is gonna be basically used for the typing and he's gonna, just gonna go for the Iron Head, the Ice Shard Iron Head here. Uh, he does go for the Protect. I do get a Dazzling Gleam off, so we'll see how much this does. Iron Head plus this Ice Shard should certainly kill. And I mean, I'm not even killing Dragonite. Oh, he has Waterfall. That does do a lot of damage. That does put me in range of Ice Shard here. So I'm not even going to be able to get a kill on the Chin Pao. So good game to Owen here. Really, really tough game uh, in VGC. Oh, all right. I get a kill. I get the Chin Pao kill. Any crits on the Dragonites? I don't think the crit would have even had an opportunity. I did get the crit on the Dragonite. It didn't matter, though. Because um, Waterfall never misses. And we do take an unfortunate loss here. Um, you know, there was still a little bit of hope, I think, in terms of making playoffs in this season. And we do still have three weeks left to go. Um, but unfortunate to take a loss here. I think the combination of Shampao Dragonite uh, was just very, very powerful as a combination. And Iron Jugulus Tailwind is, was so difficult for my team uh, to really prep into. And I think that second game went a lot better. I made a lot of good plays, but first one, this didn't go my way. It is what it is. But we're playing 2K now, and Owen's going to get it. <laughs> I, that much I know. That much I know. Uh, but that's the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed, like the video, subscribe, do all that, and I will see you next time.